take very long. So I want to talk about, because this is going to come up, okay? You don't need the notes for it. You don't need the notes for it, okay? Because it's going to come up. These things are going to come up in your notes all the time, so I need you to understand what it means, okay? So you might come across the following things as we go through the topics in this unit on diversity of living things. One thing that may come up are these things called uh, taxonomic categories, okay? These are just levels. When you guys are doing your tree of life assignment, you are going through, now I didn't call them levels, I said that you're going up a tree, right? You're going up the branches. Those are levels, okay? So these are some examples of levels. We can think of uh, these as seven examples, but there's more than seven, okay? So here's an, a neat little example of this. Here are some levels. Now, in your tree of life assignment, you have the base of the tree, and then you work your way to the top of the tree. And you saw that when we looked at humans, we went through a lot of levels, okay? Way more than what you're seeing here. If you remember, it started off at, at uh, all living things, and then we went to the branch called eukaryotes, right? And then we went to the branch called, uh, I believe it was bilaterians, and then we kept going up. And it was way more than seven. But here are just seven examples of branches, okay? And the idea is, as you go up, the groups become smaller and smaller. So as you go to the top of the tree, the groups are smaller. So this is the top of the tree on the bottom. This is the bottom of the tree, okay? This group is called kingdom. This group is called phyla. This is the class. This is the order. This is the family. This is the genus. And this is the species, okay? It becomes more restrictive as you go towards the species side. So we can think of it this way, right? Like, what does it mean to be an animal? What would be a characteristic of being in that group? Something that could what? Something that could swim, move, walk. Swim? Not all animals swim, though. Move? It's actually, I'll be honest, it's actually very hard. Because do only things that are animals move? Bacteria can move. It's not an animal. Well, all living things need energy. It's actually very, I'll be honest, it's very difficult to know exactly what defines an animal. I'll give you a hint. Uh, and even this one is not really a good one, but I, I say all, you know, all animals have muscle and nerve. It's actually technically not true. Okay? But let's just keep our world simple and say, okay, if you have muscle and you have nerve, you're here. Okay, you're an animal. Now, as we go to this level, it becomes more restrictive. Not only do you have to have the characteristics of the previous group, but then you have to have a new characteristic. So what does it mean to be a chordate? Well, you're an animal, but you're an animal with a nerve cord in the back. We're going to go through these different levels. The reason why I'm not giving you the notes for this it's because we're going to talk about this. So this is like a preview as to what you're going to see. Okay? And you'll see this when we get to the section on animals. But the idea is, as we go down, you'll notice that number of organisms in the group is what? Smaller. So like, for example, what defines this group? Mammals. What defines a mammal? What, what's, you know, what goes in here? No, that's a really bad circling job, but yeah, Angelique. Sorry? Yeah, mammary glands, which is the production of what? Milk. So a mammal is a milk producing chordate, that's an animal. Now, some mammals are carnivores, but they, they belong to the group carnivora. And here are some examples of that group. So uh, don't assume that if it eats meat, it's automatically in this group. Because I know in elementary school you learned that a carnivore is something that eats meat, okay? So if, I, if I'm if i a human and I just strictly eat meat, I guess I can call myself a carnivore. But that wouldn't put me in this group, okay? The group 
carnivora is not defined by the fact that it eats meat. It's defined by certain characteristics. Okay? Uh, like, for example, all of its teeth are sharp. That's one characteristic. There's more. Uh, I don't remember them all, to be honest with you. Now, some of the carnivores belong to a group, Philidae, which you can see are basically cats, the small, cute ones, and the big, scary ones. And then we have the genus level, Felis, and then the species level, Felis catus. Now, you see this name here? The name of any organism, and this is why I'm telling you this, because this came up, and it's going to come up. Uh, you can see how it's actually named. It's based on the genus and the species. What are we called? Homo sapiens. So the genus that we belong to would be the genus uh, Homo, right? And the species would be sapiens. It's actually, for us, it's actually sapiens, sapiens, but sapiens is good enough. So any organism would be defined by its genus level. That would be the first thing in the name, and then the species. What was the scientific name for Lucy? Um, yeah, Australopithecus afarensis. So what would the genus level be? Australopithecus. Okay, and then the uh, uh, species would be afarensis. Uh, what is the species name for a Rottweiler? Canis domesticus. Canis lupus is the wolf, and Canis domesticus is the domesticated version of that wolf. And it's close enough because, why is it close enough? Because they're very closely related. Okay? Now, so you, the reason why I'm telling you this is because you're going to see this. So, for example, here, here is the domestic cow. Okay? Uh, the, so it's, here is the name, Bos Taurus. Okay? Now, Carolus Linnaeus, the Swedish scientist, he's the one that came up with this system. Okay, but I'm not going to go into a history lesson here. Here are the levels. Okay? Which is the, uh, I guess in this case, what would be the species? Would be Bos? And then that would be the genus. And then as we go backwards, we go this way, then the, the groups become bigger. So you can see here are chordates. Okay. We can recognize some of the terms, but not all of them because there's way more than seven levels. Now here's the good thing. You only have to, you're only responsible for seven. So you don't have to worry about all the other levels. Okay, because um, you can see here, there's clearly way more than seven levels. You only have to know seven, and there's an easy way to remember it. Uh, I come up with a little, I think it's called a mnemonic. So I, so kings play chess on fine grain sand. So kings, kingdom, sand would be species. Just a way to remember it, okay? It's a way to remember it. But you can see it's it's way more than uh, than the seven levels. Now we recognize again some of them, like mammals. We could we see mammals. We could see chordates. Uh, we even recognize eukaryotes as a group. And we'll talk more about this as we go uh, into this unit. The, so that's one thing. The other thing I want you to understand, because you're going to see lots of this, is how to read the trees. Now, again, the reason I'm not giving you notes on this is because you've already gotten notes on trees. You've built trees. You've read trees. And you're going to see more trees. And I'm not talking about Christmas trees. I'm talking about these things. So, uh, how do you read this tree? What is the closest living relative to a snake. Yep, yeah, it's a lizard. What is more like the snake? The mammal? Or the bird? Or is it a trick question? 
It depends. The mammal. The mammal. Well, my bird. It was a bird. So, remember how you read it, right? You look at the branch point. So here's snakes. Here's bird. Here's the branch point that connects them, right? Okay. Here's snake. Here's mammal. Here's the branch point that connects them. The branch point that's closer to the base of the tree is further away. So snakes and birds share a branch point that's higher up the tree, so they're more like each other. That's how you read this thing. And by the way, this tree tells you something. In elementary school, you learn about the five types of animals, right? Fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds. You were lied to. You were lied to because there's only four. And one of them ain't even a group, a good group. And you'll learn about that. There are mammals. And then there are amphibians. But there's a group called fish, which isn't really a good group. And you'll see why later on in this unit. And then reptiles and birds are actually one group. And take a look why. According to this, what's more like a crocodile? A bird or a lizard? Bird. Right? A bird. Where's the branch point between birds and crocodiles? It's right here. Now, that makes a lot of sense because it explains why both birds and crocodiles have nests. They lay eggs and protect them. Lizards don't do that. Turtles don't do that. Snakes don't. Actually, do snakes do that? Maybe snakes do that. I'm not sure if they do. Um, but anyways, I want you to understand how to read these trees. Okay? So, uh, as we go through this, uh, this unit, the focus is going to be on building and analyzing cladograms, which are these trees that allow you to distinguish the relationships between the organism. So really quickly, okay? Last thing. We have five organisms. Here's an organism that has four limbs for no tail. Here's an organism that has four limbs for and a tail. This organism has four limbs and a tail. This organism has tail. This organism has four limbs for and no tail. So this group has all four limbs. What's missing? The fish. This group has all fur. What's missing? Fish and a lizard. Oops, sorry. Uh, and now this group has no tail. So when we build a cladogram, this is what it's going to look like. Right? We're going to have, is our tree. The most different thing is what? The fish. Because the lizard, the tiger, the gorilla, the chimpanzee are all things with what? Four limbs. So we can say that the common ancestor has probably have four limbs, right? The tiger, the gorilla, and the chimpanzee, what do they have all have in common? The fur. So we can say that the common ancestor of a tiger, gorilla, and chimp had fur. The point why I'm going over this is because you're going to see lots of trees in this unit. So I want you to know how to read them and interpret them. And we've been talking about this already. Right? We were even talking about this. So this shouldn't be too, too bad. Um, and that, my friends. Oh, one last question. Uh, I want to know how Gorilla lost his tail, but you don't talk in the video. Yeah, you're not supposed to talk in the video. Uh, you know what? That's it. I think I'll end there. Okay? Alright, ladies? Okay. So that is it. The end. The end.